We're going to talk about the Shroud of Turin. Uh, I'm assuming that most of you have heard about this at some point in time or another. Why is the Shroud back in the news? What, you know, what is it? Uh, why is it such a big deal? Probably because the Shroud of Turin is the most studied icon in the history of humankind. For over a hundred years, the Shroud has been scrutinized by every scientific discipline. I believe, I'll just tell you right up front, that it's the real deal. That's what I believe. Wasn't so sure about that in years past, but I believe science has proven that this image is not a painting. It's not a drawing. It's not a piece of artwork. It's, it's not a scorch. And uh, I hope to be able to tell you why in this video. The image creates three-dimensional data when evaluated, you know, with a, the right kind of scanner. No human-made artwork can do that. And after decades of study and evaluation, and, and these by experts, modern-day science cannot reproduce the image with all the same attributes. It's just not able to do that. The photograph was taken in 1898. That's exactly 50 years of Jubilee before 1948. I find that interesting. And just months after 1897, when the first Zionist Congress took place in Switzerland. And it's been, I guess, roughly, uh, it's now it's been 120 some odd years since. And I, I think that the verdict is in. I think it's the real deal. Uh, don't think, oh, you know, how awesome we know what, you know, now we know what Jesus looks like. It's not about that. We now know no man according to the flesh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now we regard him thus no longer. It's not about seeing what he looks like, even though that's kind of interesting. What is important is that it screams out the resurrection and, and the timing of the latest find, findings on this are, are no less in, incredible. The, the detailed positive image of Jesus' face was visible in that photograph because the faint image on the cloth was already a negative, you know, kind of like film exposed in an analog camera. So when it was developed, we had a positive detailed image. No human made art can accomplish that. Now, as many of you know, it was discredited by carbon dating in the 1980s. Uh, new, new research has cast doubt on, that, on the carbon dating and produced what I believe is dramatic evidence that the shroud confirms the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe that the carbon dating was flawed. And most experts at this time believe the same. Most experts at this present time assert that the authenticity of the, sh of the shroud can no longer be disputed. All the, the theories claiming the shroud to be a forgery have been disproven. Even an infamous 1988 carbon dating test has been retracted by the, get this, by the same scientific journal that originally published the results. There are dozens of individual pieces of evidence and, and new age testing methods they didn't have back in 1988, you know, such as the wide angle scattering x-ray test that show that the shroud is 2,000 years old. 2,000 years old. I believe the evidence suggests that the, the, the shroud covered Jesus at the point of res resurrection. 
the evidence is really so strong that it is hard to imagine anyone with an open mind seeing it as anything less than compelling. Despite the fact that most people seem to think research on the shroud came to an end with the carbon dating in 1988, it has become the most single researched artifact in history. Now, bear in mind where we're at prophetically as all this is unfolding. The bottom line is that science has shown the image on the cloth is an impossible image, one that can't be replicated. One of the main reasons is, as, as scientists have now confirmed, the image on the shroud, it had to be caused by a mysterious burst of light that is electromagnetic radiation. In short, the evidence indicates the shroud was wrapped around a real body that simply dematerialized without disturbing the perfectly formed blood clots that were on the cloth. That can only happen through an event like that described in the Gospels as the resurrection. An event that as the Gospels state, uh, freed Jesus' body from material constraints. I think it's the real deal. The only evidence that's, that has challenged the Shroud's authenticity, the carbon dating, has now been shown to be flawed. Raw data from the carbon test released after 29 years by a, a Freedom of Information action has revealed that the tests were not definitive at all. And this fact is confirmed by historical research indicating that the shroud was around long before the carbon date that dated it in the Middle Ages. The evidence has been further strengthened by new dating tests that have dated the linen cloth to the first century. I want to give you some reasons why I believe it's genuine. The only piece of evidence that appeared uh, to contradict the shroud's authenticity no longer makes sense. Four research papers authored by a total of 12 experts have now been published in peer-reviewed academic journals, all agreeing the carbon dating was flawed and calling for a new carbon dating to be carried out. This view has been supported by many shroud researchers, including uh, on, uh, nuclear engineers, uh, one who's written ex extensively on the shortcomings of the carbon dating. The call for a new carbon dating has also been supported by uh, an editor of a journal that first published the carbon dating results. There's so many fascinating facts that surround this, I, I couldn't cram it all in one video, but church authorities really ought to resist being pressured into further carbon-14 carbon tests on the cloth, and for a number of reasons, including the fact that carbon dating, the shroud, will never be definitive. Why? Because the cloth is clearly contaminated and because the tests would be destructive. When the carbon 
dating test. When, when the carbon dating was first proposed, a multidisciplinary committee of scientists recommended that seven samples from at least three separate areas of the cloth would be needed for carbon dating to be credible. But the carbon daters ended up taking only one sample and dividing it into three pieces. Let me ask you, why would the church agree to destructive testing now? Testing that would require taking seven more samples of the cloth, given that the latest evidence indicates that the shroud has been contaminated by carbon-14. Many of you understand and believe, I, I believe you believe, that we're engaged in a spiritual warfare here. And why do it at a time when the evidence that the shroud is authentic is more powerful than ever? I'll get to the timing of this in a minute. At the same time, there are now newer, non-destructive dating tests that appear to be more accurate and less likely to be affected by carbon-14 contamination. As we speak, well, I'll just I'll hold off on that. One of these tests, a wide-angle X-ray scattering, it recently dated the shroud of the first century. The test is non-destructive. It can be repeated many times using a single sample. Three other dating tests by experts have confirmed the first century date. Folks, these things are important. So really, why would the church rush into further carbon dating of the shroud? Well, some researchers argue the evidence for the shroud's authenticity is now so compelling that further dating is unnecessary. This is where we're at with the Shroud of Turin. You know, the evidence that exists now confirms that the image on this uh, four meter long cloth is an impossible image, one that can only be explained by some kind of supernatural event. For this to baffle men this way, researchers, scientists this way, is incredible. The fact is, the, the image on the shroud has never been replicated by science, and that's because the evidence suggests that it can't be. It is a high-resolution, photographic negative, 3D image caused by a discolor, uh, discoloration of a uniform layer of microscopic linen microfibers, something that could only be caused by a finely tuned burst of electromagnetic radiation that came from the body itself. The authenticity of the shroud is supported by much more evidence than most people realize. Riddles of the Shroud, That's, it's a book that it lists 99 pieces of evidence that support its authenticity. That evidence includes microscopic deposits on the Shroud of extremely rare soil found in Jerusalem and microscopic deposits of flower pollen from Jerusalem. And they want to run more tests. There's also chemical evidence that the blood on the cloth is something that is consistent with a body that's suffered uh, torture, different kinds of torture. The man who headed the, the carbon dating of the shroud you know, some guy from a British museum 
had stated that he has come to accept the cloth was not created, not created by a some medieval forger as the carbon daters claimed at the time of the carbon dating. Now, I believe there'll always be two sides to this issue, but you, folks, you gotta weigh the evidence. One researcher stated in a BBC interview that he believes the evidence indicates that there was in fact a crucified body in the cloth. He, specula he, he, he speculated that the man on the shroud may have been a Christian crusader who was crucified in an act of humiliation by Muslim troops. But that version of events does not stand up to scrutiny. It doesn't, it doesn't fit the evidence that points to a supernatural rather than a natural event. All the evidence points to a supernatural event, not a natural event. However, his, his views, though warped as they, they may be, you know, this, it provides an important admission that the shroud was not a fake by a medieval for, forger as the, the, the carbon daters claimed back in 1988 when they released the results that have now been widely criticized. The evidence for the shroud's authenticity includes confirmation by forensic pathologists that the shroud features anatomical and physiological information unknown in the Middle Ages. The perfect wounds and blood deposits on the cloth were not disturbed, folks. They were not disturbed by the removal of the body. You know, when you dress a wound in a cloth bandage, it, st it sticks hard. And when the bandage is removed, the blood clots break up and traces of flesh can be found on the cloth. There is no evidence that the blood deposits on the shroud have been disturbed. It appears that the body simply dematerialized in a way that, that did not disturb the blood. You know, at the same time, leaving behind an image that could not have been created in the Middle Ages any more than in the first century. Do I think it's genuine? I'm leaning hard that direction. Despite extensive research by scientists, including chemists and physicists, there's, there is no explanation of how the body disappeared. The impossibly faint image that was left on the cloth indicates that this event was accompanied by a burst of light which is the only thing scientists have found to be capable of reproducing the discoloration on the microfibers on a linen cloth. And these are smart people, these experts. In a fascinating twist of the carbon dating story, it turns out that the electromagnetic radiation is also capable of increasing levels of carbon-14 on a linen cloth. This was con confirmed by the carbon daters themselves who said, basically said, you know, dead bodies don't emit bursts of electromagnetic energy. The problem is that they were focused on the carbon dating and not on the evidence on the shroud itself. Evidence indicating that an extraordinary event had in fact taken place. The evidence that we have now makes it clear 
that this event involved a burst of electromagnetic energy, the very thing that can both explain the impossible image on the cloth and the raised levels of carbon-14. But despite this breakthrough, scientists are still unable to replicate the shroud's impossible image that is the high resolution photographic negative 3D image that appeared on the cloth after the wounds and blood flows and blood clots had formed. The shroud confirms all the details of the gospel account of Jesus' death and resurrection. According to the gospel account, the first person to believe in the resurrection was the apostle John, you know, who entered the tomb, examined the empty shroud, then accepted that the resurrection had occurred. As John's account in his own gospel states, he saw and he believed. He saw and he believed. The fact is, is that the, the shroud offers powerful evidence for the resurrection, evidence that is now so strong that it ought to convince any well-instructed jury beyond a shadow of a doubt or beyond a reasonable doubt, however they say that, that the shroud is authentic and also that the resurrection did in fact take place. And here we are in 2024. Why didn't God just confirm everything in 1988? Why did He want it to be confirmed now? Here's a few reasons I'll give you for proving that the, I think uh, the Shroud of Turin is the real image of Jesus. Not that we are focused on the image itself, but the fact of His resurrection. I'm certain that the figure of the man on the shroud is Jesus of Nazareth. Wrapped in a sheet. It, the one on the shroud was wrapped in a sheet. Both Jesus and the man on the shroud were wrapped in a sheet after death, which was very rare in antiquity especially in the case of crucifixion. In fact, the corpse was often left to wild animals or buried in mass graves. Okay? And then we have the crown of thorns. Both Jesus and the man on the shroud, the image on the shroud, both were, wore a crown of thorns on their heads. This fact is truly ex exceptional. No historical document describes this custom. When it came to transporting the cross, you know, like Jesus, the man of the shroud carried a heavy object on his shoulders, which can only be the cross on which he was nailed. The condemned carrying... Uh, You know, this was not performed at all crucifixions, but it certainly is here. The use of nails. I want to. I want to say the use of nails. Both both the Jesus and the man of the shroud were nailed to a cross. Nailed to it. All right. This this method seems to have been reserved for official crucifixions. Because actually, the truth is, folks, in most cases, the condemned were fixed to the cross with ropes. That's just a fact. Not worth the nails, I suppose. And then we have unbroken legs. Both were injured in the side after death with unbroken legs. Now, come on, folks. I mean, this is unique. 
you know, because breaking the legs of the crucified to hasten death was more common. And then there's no washing or anointing. No washing or anointing. Both were wrapped in the shroud immediately after being taken down from the cross. We know that from the account with Joseph. Takes him down, wraps him in linen, wraps him in a sheet. Without any washing or a anointing taking place. This is what our text says. Instead, normal burial customs included washing the body and anointing it with aromatic oils before wrapping it in a cloth. Didn't happen in this case. In Jesus' case, we know that He was wrapped in a sheet and placed in a tomb immediately. That is what our text says. Immediately after He was taken down from the cross. Wasn't later that the women came around, went home, prepared the spices and such, and came back the next morning on the first day of the week, and the tomb was, well, open. Okay? It was open. They, the, the women never had a chance to apply the spices that they prepared. Okay? He remained in the sheet for a short time. Both. Both Jesus as well as the man in the shroud, image in the shroud, both remained in the sheet for a short amount of time. In the case of the man on the shroud, uh, of the shroud, uh, to obtain the image that we see, it was necessary for the corpse to remain on the sheet for a few hours, but no more, no more than two or three days no more than two or three days. Why? Because the decomposition process would have destroyed the image and left simple stains on the fabric which the shroud doesn't depict. Okay? In the, in the same way, Jesus was wrapped in a sheet after being taken down from the cross and remained wrapped for no more than 40 hours. The probability that these seven events occurred uh, simultaneously in another man who underwent the torture of crucifixion is, get this, one in 20 billion. All right? In other words, out of 20 billion, Possible crucified people, only one could have possessed these seven characteristics. So what do you think now? You think it's real? Folks, there could not have been 20 billion crucifixions. That, crucifixions, at most a few hundred thousand or a few million, not 20 billion. Yeah, we know that what Luke says, he writes that Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. The, I looked at that in the Greek, it's cloth, singular, cloth singular, not strips of linen. It's a single sheet. Okay? I, throughout the years, I'm sure many skeptics have wondered, you know, what is so special about the shroud? People wonder why this cloth captures the imagination and the and the conscience. The shroud holds the truth for many and a fear of accountability for others. So, I believe that it is no longer shrouded in mystery. You know, okay, I had to say that. And it's the timing of it, folks. Here we are. If you've been following the events that are unfolding from a prophetic, biblical perspective, you know that for these recent findings to, for, for there to be this change in, in a change in thinking about this since 1988, 
or that we come to, to this year and now all of a sudden just for us to discover that given everything else that's going on I'll just say it I, I think God is confirming that Christ rose from the dead and I have no problem with that at all look thank you for listening we love you all here at Blessed Hope Forever we truly do Join us on Sunday as we study through Galatians. Until then, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.